Today we're gonna play Frankenstein. Basically, I'm gonna try and conjure up an unholy concoction of GTS 450 Ghetto Sly action. <laughs> or if you want it in more normie speak, basically I'm gonna fix two fake GTS 450s and then try and run them in SLI. I'd recommend you buckle up because this is one hell of a process. Now the first step is we need to unscramble the brains of two of these four fake GTS 450s so they actually properly identify as GTS 450s. Okay, actually it's more like one of three because I've already fixed this Wish GTS 450 way back in the day. So hopefully one of these three can actually have their brains unscrambled enough for it to identify as a proper GTS 450. Now in practice, flashing a new BIOS onto these cards is reasonably straightforward. Because of how weird and mangled their brains are, I can't just use NV Flash. I have to actually locate the BIOS chip physically on the card and then use this USB BIOS flasher to flash various GTS 450 BIOSes onto these cards and hope that one of them sticks. And one of the things that's really irritating about it is that on most of these fake cards, the BIOS chip is actually underneath the heatsink. So every time you want to flash a new BIOS onto it, you have to take the cooler off, flash a BIOS onto it, put the cooler back on, and then test it, and then rinse and repeat. Now you may go like, well, all you do is you find a GTS 450 BIOS and install it onto here. It's not that difficult. You just need to do it once. That's never ever how this works. <laughs> Almost died there. <clears throat> In fact, on Tech Power Up's website, there are 96 different GTS 450 BIOSes for me to, to, to scrounge through. Uh, I'm not excited for this process at all. Uh, if you want more information on how to actually do this, I'll have an old video of mine linked in the description below with more detail about this actual BIOS flashing process. But for now, let's get into it and see if we can get one of these three cards actually working. Please let this be the one that works. <laughs> Finally got a second GTS 450 working. I actually retested the fake wish card and it still works. And what's really promising for the whole SLI thing is the fact that this version is also a 512 meg version. So they have the same frame buffer. I'm really confident at this point that this may actually work. So I've just finished benchmarking the single card, or at least just trying out a couple of games. So now I'm gonna drop in the, the Wish card to have what is probably gonna be the most ridiculous looking SLI setup in the history of man. 
Now that I've narrowed down the two graphics cards that I'm gonna use for the ghetto sly, I've put them together in the system, and as you can see, they look majestic. There's something really beautiful about the way the light glistens off the plastic. Mmm, that's some tasty dual graphics card action. One of the things you've probably noticed from looking at this beautiful SLI setup is that only one of the GTS 450 fake cards actually physically has an SLI finger on it. So despite the fact that the GTS 450 actually officially supports SLI, we're gonna have to use unofficial means to get it working because well, the other car doesn't have an SLI finger, and NVIDIA doesn't want you to SLI without that SLI bridge. So we're gonna have to use something called SLI Auto GPU, or I can't remember what it's called. I'm gonna use that to unofficially enable SLI in the drivers. Now on paper, this seems like a very straightforward thing to do. There's a little readme that comes with the download that has a couple of steps on how to get this running and it seems fairly straightforward. It's not, it's, it's not gonna be straightforward. After five hours of trying various configurations of one graphics card on top of the other and when I was just on the verge of giving up, I went onto a forum, which I've spent the last five hours on, and just jumped to a random page on the forum, hoping that there was gonna be some information pertaining to my situation. And there just happened to be someone who posted a new version of this SLI Auto. It wasn't the same guy that made it, I think it was a different person, uh, but basically, this helped a lot. After I installed the new set of drivers and got all of that ready, I get to a point where, um, yeah, the actual file that you need to use for the SLI Auto Ghetto Sly software to get it to work uh, didn't, didn't generate. So then I jumped a couple more pages on into the forum post and there was somebody who had the same problem. And all you have to do is just search for it. If it's not in the System32 driver folder, it may be somewhere else. I found it, patched it, and oh hell yeah, look at that. It is 10 p.m. I have been busy for over seven hours and I finally gotten it to a point where I can enable SLI on the two fake GTS 450s. Now, whether or not it's gonna have a positive impact on the performance is a completely different story, but I'm so amped. This was so much effort and it's finally working. I, I think. Actually, let's try and activate it. Let's, let's apply. Um. <laughs> okay, brief panic over. It's working! Look at that! Okay, so now we just need to see what kind of performance degradation, if anything, we get from SLIing these two, these two very legitimate graphics cards. But before then, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to bed. As you can see, I only tested four games. It's not exactly a hardware unboxed style exhaustive test, but I do have a pretty good excuse for it. To get the patched drivers to load with the ghetto sly whatever, uh, you actually have to run Windows in test mode. And test mode causes some kind of weird allergic reaction to uh, anti-cheat software in games. Any game that is any kind of competitive online element, you, you can't test. So we're stuck with four games, but they do have a pretty interesting variety of results. Two of the games performed better, which is really exciting. That's much more than I expected. But then the other two, i.e. Rise of the Skywalker, I mean Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider and uh, Dota, for some reason, actually performed worse. Now let's have a look at some screen capture here so that you can see proof that the two cards are actually running here. Now, with GTA 5, we did see a bit of an improvement in performance, and you can see the two GPUs are running reasonably well together, but we do very much run into that 500 megabyte VRAM limitation here, and this is a bit of a theme throughout all of the games. 
Now again, the average frame rate is higher, but we did actually get lower 1% and 0.1% lows because the game was more stuttery, even though it has a higher frame rate. The same thing went for Half-Life 2, and Half-Life 2 also runs into those VRAM limitations. So yeah, it's even in the games where you get a positive improvement in average frame rate, you're, you're still getting a more stuttery experience. Moving over to uh, Rise of the Sky, I, can't, I keep thinking it's called Rise of the Skywalker. Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, yeah, you're getting quite a bit worse performance. What's interesting though, is that I accidentally launched um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and that really likes being run on a GTS 450 Ghetto Sly setup, as you can see here. It's Mmm, that's some beautiful artifacting you've got going there. So with that, was it worth it? Absolutely not. There was genuinely zero point in me doing this, but we had two games actually kind of sideways better performed, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's actually better than I was expecting. Uh, you'd probably get better results if you had one gig versions of the cards, because we definitely had some VRAM limitations, but still, I cannot believe that we actually got a little bit of benefit out of running two fake GTX 1050 Ti's converted into real GTS 450's ghetto SLI'd together. I, I, I think that's a, that's a pretty exciting chain of events right there. So if you enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Follow me on whatever social media and Patreon and all that stuff linked in the description below. And until the next video, bye-bye.